Working in the spirit of Texas. From WFAA-TV, this is the News 8 Update. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be able to talk and walk and work. Um, and I have a lot of hope and a lot to look forward to in the future. This farmer's branch woman spends the holiday with her family, thankful to be alive after a horrifying boating accident last summer. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. For many of us, this is the day we slow down, take a breather, remember all of that for which we are thankful. It is a very special day for the family of Stephanie Booker. We've told you about her before. Stephanie's life was shattered this past summer following a hit-and-run boating accident on Lake Louisville. Channel 8's Renee Seiler reports. Give me a... oh, uh... I told you my mom was a good cook. This Farmer's Branch family is thankful to share the holiday together. It's been a very trying year. Coffee? Uh, coffee. Five months ago, Stephanie Booker was boating on Lake Louisville with friends. About midnight, another boat hit their craft, then fled. The two other women on board suffered cuts and bruises. Stephanie was severely disfigured as the boat's propeller slashed her face. I'm a very different person. Stephanie is still recovering and asked not to be photographed. The accident forced her to slow the nonstop pace of her life. I maybe didn't take time to smell the roses enough. Um, if someone perhaps had upset me, I might have held a little grudge a little longer than I should have, and now I don't have time for any of that anger. That's how she feels about the accident, too. Authorities are still investigating, but so far, no one's been charged. Meanwhile, Stephanie concentrates on healing. She faces seven more reconstructive surgeries, and even with insurance, her family is buried in bills. My mother has had to make hundreds, and it will be thousands of phone calls before this is over, to ask for people to reduce bills um, where the insurance, you know, hasn't paid. Stephanie is thankful for her entire family, but especially for her mother, who put her broken daughter back together. I'm just uh, filled with love and thankfulness, and I think more so this year, just because uh, uh, I almost lost an important part of my life. Last year, we just were all around the table and taking everything for granted and loving every bit of it and, and all of a sudden a, a big tragedy happens and the only thing that changes I think is that everybody kind of rallies around in a big in a big love ball. Family members say they are not bitter but better following their ordeal and for that they give thanks. Renee Seiler, Channel 8 News. Now, Stephanie Booker has come a long way in the last five months but doctors say she still needs major work on her face and mouth. They estimate that will cost about a half million dollars. This Thanksgiving turned tragic for a Fort Worth family. A three-year-old girl is in serious condition after being shot once in the chest this afternoon. Officers aren't sure exactly how it happened, but they do know the toddler and her four-year-old cousin were alone in a room where a loaded gun was left in an unlocked lower dresser drawer. A relative was also transported to a hospital after she collapsed from shock. An emergency at noon today at a new antique mall in Collin County. The building for a new antique mall in Frisco caught fire, and the smoke could be seen for miles. Flames never reached the furniture and paintings displayed by a dozen dealers inside, but there was smoke and water damage. Repairmen using a blowtorch to patch a leak caused the blaze. The grand opening of the mall has been delayed, but the owner says it will be back in business soon. Losses from the fire are still being tabulated. Nick Leeson, the man who lost a billion dollars from a renowned London bank, is back in Singapore today, awaiting trial. Authorities escorted Leeson through the Singapore airport today, surrounded by the media. Leeson is accused of crimes that led to the collapse of Barings Bank. He, has extra he was extradited from Germany, to which he fled six months ago in fear of Singapore's punishment. Just hours ago, Leeson was formally charged with fraud and forgery. There is word tonight the Bosnian Serbs military and political leaders will step down. Sources close to the Bosnian Serb leadership say Radovan Karadzic and General Ratko Mladic will indeed resign, but they did not say when. After meeting with Serbia's president today, Karadzic reportedly accepted the peace accord negotiated by Balkan leaders earlier this week. That accord prohibits anyone indicted for war crimes from holding office in Bosnia. Both Karadzic and Mladic have been indicted for crimes against humanity. Meanwhile, the thought of Bosnia weighs heavy on the minds of U.S. troops stationed in Germany. 
They got a break from training today to enjoy a traditional Thanksgiving dinner of turkey. Still, more than 13,000 soldiers could soon go to Bostia as part of the Peace Implementation Force. U.S. Defense Secretary William Perry is slated to visit the troops training in southern Germany tomorrow. Last weekend, we told you about an Army veteran who wanted to cut through government red tape to get his family home for the holiday. Tonight, Channel 8's Mary Stewart says as a result of a call from Channel 8 and a push from government authorities, the veteran's dream has come true. Mechanic Larry Counts wants the big wigs in Washington to know the problems he's had lately, and today will be no exception. I've been waiting for a long time. I just want to know, is the plane been canceled? Is my wife coming in? Flight 623 has been canceled. Bureaucratic red tape has kept his wife loose, stranded in Boca Tall, Colombia for three weeks. And now, just moments before he's to meet her at DFW Airport, her connecting flight has been canceled. The 28-year-old woman went to the U.S. Embassy in Bogota to get a visa that would allow her Colombian-born son from a previous marriage to return with her to Texas. Then, the Washington budget crisis closed the U.S. Embassy in Bogota, and the Army veteran says the American government left his wife stranded. I served my country, and, I, you know, and I'm dedicated, and I've been in the military 27 years, and I feel like I asked the government for a little favor, and uh, they didn't come through. Counts blames President Clinton as well as Republican politicians. I guarantee you this, uh, I would look into uh, putting somebody else in the office other than them. I'm, I'm really serious about that. Here she comes. <laughs> but all anger melted with the arrival of Luce and the couple's baby. I love you, sweetie. Plus the family's newest member, Colombian-born Mickey. I'm very happy. Most wonderful Thanksgiving I've had in, in years, many years. Uh, because I got my family back, and, uh, and we're very happy. <laughs> we're going to go home and eat some Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, we're going to make up for lost time. <laughs> Counts wishes Washington politicians could understand what it's like to face Thanksgiving without loved ones. Happily, that's one thing he won't have to face, after all. Mary Stewart, Channel 8 News. Some children had to spend this holiday in the hospital, but that didn't keep many of them from enjoying a Thanksgiving Day tradition. You want to make an uh, apple pie? I'll let you use this batch, and then if you need some more, just tell her, okay? Thanksgiving Day transforms the playroom at Children's Medical Center in Dallas into a pie paradise. Young bakers choose their favorite flavors and create pastry masterpieces. The annual event helps take their minds off their medical problems and lets them enjoy the Thanksgiving festivities with their families. And best of all, they get to eat their culinary creations. Well, as most families finish off that last piece of pie, many people look over the treasures they bought today at stores open on the holiday. But, well, some see Thanksgiving as the last remaining family holiday and think retailers have stepped on tradition. Channel 8's Anita Vanetti reports. Fact. Venture is open Thanksgiving Day for an early start in holiday savings. The 82-hour non-stop shop-a-thon at Garden Ridge. Major retailers like Venture, Garden Ridge, and Kmart jumped the gun one day by opening on Thanksgiving Day to a steady stream of customers. Stores like Walmart and Target wait until sunrise Friday to launch what they hope will be a shopping frenzy, although early signs indicate sobering news for retailers. In October, major retailers report the lowest monthly sales growth in four years, and that sends a warning signal about the Christmas shopping season. Now more than ever, retailers are choosing to open on the holidays, and they're extending their hours and sales promotion campaigns to try to capture that limited consumer dollar. Came out an idea, well, how about making this a family day? Enjoy walking around and, and getting that Christmas spirit early. All righty. But if you ask Sonia Cook of Arlington, shopping should not be a family event. This year, for the first time in 24 years, her husband, a store manager, will be late for the traditional meal. I think it's because the monetary aspect has overtaken our lives. And what's important to her is not shopping, but sharing time with family at home. Shoppers say they can buy and eat together on the same day. We commute, and we didn't have a chance to finish all our shopping. And so here, last minute, we got the, got the chance to finish up. 
as a family. In a changing world for American families, the daily rush is often relieved by more convenient shopping. But Cook remains constant in her conviction that the Thanksgiving tradition should be protected, saying it doesn't mix well with buying and selling. I don't think change is always necessarily for the good. Anita Vanetti, Channel 8 News. An Oak Cliff restaurant is putting profit-making aside this Thanksgiving holiday in order to serve others in need. Norma's Cafe opened its doors to the neighborhood and the homeless today for a free Thanksgiving dinner with all the trimmings. It's a holiday tradition seven years in the making. The cafe's owner expected to serve more than 1,700 of what he calls his special friends. Happy Thanksgiving. In Fort Worth, some of the city's less fortunate feasted on turkey and trimmings picnic style. Hundreds of homeless lined up at the corner of I-35 and Rosedale to fill their plates. Their hosts were Daily Bread Ministries and the Jolly Chef. Organizers say the area's top 20 chefs prepared the more than 1,200 meals, which included a whopping 125 turkeys. Well, it's no secret most of us eat too much on Thanksgiving, but thousands have found a remedy in an event held every year in Dallas. Three, two, one, go! A record crowd of more than 17,000 runners took part in the 28th annual Dallas YMCA Turkey Trot. Runners go either three miles or eight miles. That takes them through downtown Dallas to Oak Cliff and back. The winner in the men's division was Justin Chaston of Houston with the time of 39 minutes, 54 seconds. The first woman to cross the finish line was Lupe Loma from Team Azteca. All right. Well, still to come on the update, most people can hum or even sing along to a few Beatles songs, but one North Texas band is bringing the tunes alive. After we play on Friday nights, usually to one person's house and listen to Beatles music <laughs> until the sun comes up. True Blue fans who say the Beatles are forever. Coming next. And how's Emmett's knee? Well, the latest is coming up in sports. Este noticiero es transmitido en español por KRBA, Radio Variedades, 1600 AM. You know, over time, memories of the Beatles may fade, despite programs like ABC's Beatles Anthology, seen earlier this evening here on Channel 8. But one thing hasn't changed and won't, their music. Channel 8's Renee San Miguel introduces us to some North Texans who are doing their part to keep the Fab Four's music alive. <laughs> Bellum may be the home of alternative music and pierced body parts, but on Fridays at Club Dada from 6 to 9 p.m., baby boomers rule. It's been a, a hard night's day. Five local Beatles fans with the talent to perform the Fab Four's repertoire. From the band's early hits... ...to the psychedelic final days. Everybody had a good time. They're true to the to the real Beatles. The truest band that I've heard. Take you back in time? Yes, definitely. Singing along with the songs, remember where you were then. They're great. Jim Savage, Bob Cummins, Mark Amon, Danny Della Matier, and Doug Cox have manned this musical Wayback Machine since March of last year. The crowds are big now, but back then it was just a few Beatle-loving skeptics. We heard a lot of comments of, I came in here, expecting to be critical and I was pretty impressed with what you guys are pulling off. Or some people are just really freaked out that everybody, you know, has that that sound like quality. Goodbye to where you want to go. On behalf of the group and ourselves, I hope we pass the audition. Things sometimes get lost in here. They're just they're just I almost said there's too many. <laughs> You'll never catch me saying that. George Gamark, veteran Dallas DJ and now author, has written books about punk and new wave music. But his heart will always belong to pop music's patron saints, even if the Beatles inspired some dubious imitations. This is out of Fort Worth. I love this record. This is, this is killer. It's been a hard day's night, and I've been working like a 
Miss Yetta Bronstein. Then the house, say the something. I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. They, they affected all levels of culture. Indeed, here's Mexico's Los Yaqui. Here's a girl group answer to an early Beatles hit. This whole series of tapes all the way down to here are Beatle interview tapes. It's all part of Gamark's impressive collection of songs and spoken words by and about the Beatles. Gamark says hardcore collectors like himself already have many of the songs released on the new Beatles anthology CD. But he adds, interest in the band is not getting better all the time. The new record collectors that are in their 20s and 30s, they're interested in Kiss, Aerosmith, Led Zeppelin, maybe Jimi Hendrix, Cheap Trick. Mm -hmm. It's that generation that they're interested in collecting the Beatles, that it, it doesn't really mean anything to them. In the town where I was born. There wasn't a lot of Beatles paraphernalia around when Doug Green was growing up in the West Texas town of Sweetwater. We were lucky if they had uh, maybe the, the set of dolls or maybe a Beatle wig or something. But Green has made up for it in a big way, thanks to his Dallas and Irving Pepperland stores, where the 60s and 70s come back to day glow life t-shirts and collectibles, but also a lot of Doug Green's life on display. A visit to Pepperland is more than just a visit to a store in a mall. It's kind of like walking into a museum, a shrine, if you will, that's a testament to Doug Green's 31 years of collecting Beatles memorabilia. We all live in a yellow submarine. Well, this is an unused ticket for the last Shea Stadium show in 1966. Yeah, that's one of the outtake photos from the Sgt. Pepper album shoot. But what fuels Green's obsession isn't the fashion, the political statements, not even the Beatles' pantyhose. Basically, a woman could keep the Beatles very close to her. Exactly. Right. Above all else, it's the music. So what's the best thing you ever, you've ever collected? Well, my, for myself, it's, uh, it's my Michelle Sheep music that's autographed by Paul McCartney. That's my daughter's name. She was named for that song. Green's daughter is a living reminder of what strikes a chord in all Beatles fans. Renee San Miguel, Channel 8 News. Boy, it has been a Beatles week. It uh, has. Maybe Jerry Lee Lewis ought to do. We Next week, Focus Jerry Lee Lewis then follows. <laughs> I hope Renee so. put his shoes back on. It's going to be about 38 in the morning, and he'll need them. Uh, so will you. But after that, it's going to warm up quickly for the weekend. Stay where you are. I'll be right back. Closed captioning of News 8 is sponsored by Irving Healthcare System, where you can reduce your risk of heart attack by enrolling in the National Heart Attack Risk Study. Oh, we're starting to lose that high cloud cover we had as an upper low pressure wave pushes it onto the south. It was never all that significant anyway as far as holding temperatures up tonight. So I don't think it will be any colder than we earlier thought, probably about 38 in the morning. And that'll be the coldest night of this five-day outlook. Here's the way things look overnight. High pressure seems closer to us. The winds go light, variable by morning. 38, a degree or two cooler in some cooler suburbs, but I don't think we'll see any freezing temperatures anywhere close by. During the day tomorrow... Winds turn uh, light suddenly, 58 or so by noon. It'll warm up slowly, but when it does, it really will. Tomorrow afternoon's high temperature will likely finish up in the upper 60s in another trough of low pressure, familiar pattern here. And day after tomorrow, that's going to cause it to be quite windy, but that'll also cause it to warm up a lot because it'll be a strong southerly wind. Well, that's day after tomorrow for Saturday. Partly cloudy at 10, 50 degrees, 48% humidity. The barometer is steady. The wind is from the north, still at 14 miles an hour, but it'll be dying off just about nothing by morning before turning south during the day. Here's the way the day looked when you put it on the satellite sequence. The high clouds uh, we can see now just about to leave the area. In the next couple of hours, they'll move on down south. Uh, there was never any significant precipitation, a lot of uh, uh, rain that never reached the ground today as this low pressure system was uh, very high up and so were the cloud bases. So once again, we missed the rain. As this upper low moves toward the southeast, so will the clouds. Temperatures at 10. Dropped to 39 at Oklahoma City, where it's just about cleared. 35 at Amarillo, where it's been pretty much clear all day. And those are the other current readings as of 10 o'clock. Here's the way 
things went today. 64 was a high, 47 was the low. And here's the way things look around the U.S. Now, this is the satellite sequence. We'll note some cold air dropping down in the middle part of the country, but it's been a pretty calm Thanksgiving uh, for much of the U.S. today. Showers and some thunder showers in the east, nothing severe. Some thunder and lightning in southern Mississippi and Alabama. This upper low pressure wave will join the low pressure trough over there and move that system offshore, dropping some cold air into the east tomorrow. Temperatures tonight are pretty cold in the middle of the country, but it's that time of year. It's 19 in Omaha, but it'll warm up there tomorrow in the 20s from the Dakotas down into Chicago. Tomorrow, this front starts to move offshore. The upper low in the southeast deepens enough to cause a low pressure wave along the front, so there'll be quite a bit of rain in northern Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas tomorrow. But no systems approaching that are going to make us cold for the next five days. So, five-day outlook looks like this. Overnight tonight, we'll be clearing and a low of about 38 degrees. Sunshine tomorrow, 68. Southerly winds by afternoon, 45 tomorrow night. Saturday, partly sunny, quite windy, but about 77 degrees. Southerly winds, 15, 25 miles an hour, maybe gustier than that. Saturday night, about 50. Sunday, once again, about 78, low 55. Monday, there may be some showers as the next cool front comes in. 72 daytime, 43 night. Tuesday, partly sunny and 63. So, kind of chilly tonight, but a quick warm-up and in the 70s for your Christmas shopping weekend. Terrific. Okay, and hope you had a good Thanksgiving. I did. Thank okay, you. thanks, Troy. There's some ice on the ground outside in Dallas this evening, but no, Troy didn't goof up on the forecast. It's not what you might think. Dallas on Ice is a new outdoor ice skating rink in the West End Historic District between the Spaghetti Warehouse and Planet Hollywood. The city's newest holiday tradition officially opens tomorrow. A grand opening show kicks off the season. Admission is free, but if you can't make it, you can see it live here on Channel 8 at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Well, the matchup between the Cowboys and the Chiefs was the big game in the NFL today. And we'll get a full report on the game and some locker room comments next. Plus, the Southwest Conference Showdown puts Baylor and Texas in the spotlight tonight. Sports is next. Was heading it toward his tight end, who was open. But Dean Jackson got in the way. Certainly a victory today, but the real question is what price victory? Huh? Well, that's exactly right, because they're still not sure about Emmett Smith. They'll find more about his knee tomorrow, but Ray Donaldson is definitely out for the year. He mm. fractured his ankle, so mm. they are a beat-up bunch, no question about it. Kansas City Chiefs came to town with the best record in the NFL, but they hadn't played the best in the NFL until today. The ambush started from the opening gun. But it was the Cowboys doing the firing. Troy Aikman to Michael Irvin three times on the opening 70-yard drive. And Emmett Smith attacking the middle for the final 15. And a quick 7 to nothing lead. We've been picking it up. The past couple of weeks, we've been picking it up. And uh, can hopefully, we can, we'll continue to pick it up. Second possession, same result. Another 11-play drive, including four more Irvin catches. The final one in spectacular fashion for a 33-yard score and a 14-0 lead. I'm still kind of wondering myself exactly how he caught that. Uh, you know, they, I've been asked that question a lot of, of Michael and a lot of Emmett. And uh, yeah, I don't know that either one of those guys can do anything more to surprise me. Irvin added his 500th career catch and tied another NFL record with his 10th 100-yard game of the season but wouldn't talk about any of it after the game. A game that turned Kansas City's way in the second quarter with a pair of field goals that cut the lead to 14-6. We were able to get something going. Yeah, we just, just took us a little bit to get started. After circling their wagons in the halftime locker room, the Cowboys came out ready to attack again. Another 70-yard drive opened the third. Aikman to Jay Novacek over the final hurdle for a 33-yard score. Hey, jump over him. A lot of times things just come to you so fast out there and uh, seems like slow motion. You, all the time is a very, very short period of time. You think a lot. But Dallas let its defense down a bit. Next Chiefs possession, Steve Bono's arrow hit Lake Dawson, beating the scheme for 45 yards. It was 21-12 after a missed two-point try. As the thing began to unfold, it, it appeared to me that we began to get a sense of, hey, you know, maybe maybe we're all right. Maybe we can get some things done. Watch Emma Smith. The excitement of what was suddenly becoming a close battle was quickly silenced by the sight of a fallen warrior. Watch this. Emmett Smith down late third after planning and twisting his left knee. Called a sprain, Smith could not return. Further tests will follow.
No, I, I just get that sick feeling and the hope that I, if it's not as serious, just don't overreact right now, let's wait and see. And we really don't know at this point in time. I mean, we really don't know that we do the MRI. And the only thing I feel good about is Emin himself has told me. I went in there and I said, don't tell me what the doctor told you, how you feel. Tell me how you feel. He said, I think I'm going to be all right. Yeah, I'm doing right. You know, when, when Emmy goes down, you know, first thing you hope for is you hope that uh, it's not anything major. What could have been a crushing blow inspired the Cowboys instead. With the Chiefs ready to strike again, Tony Tolbert blasted Bono. Darren Smith stole the loose ball and charged 63 yards the other way setting up a Chris Bonio field goal that put the Chiefs away. When I saw it on the ground, yeah, I just picked it up and started running. And, uh, you know, I saw offensive linemen downfield, so I just assumed that this, this would be a nice stroll in the park. And uh, unfortunately, that guy could run. The final minutes proved the Cowboys' reinforcements would hold off any Kansas City comeback. Sherman Williams with the longest run of the day, 24 yards. And the Cowboys continued their run on the AFC 24-12 final. Kansas City has a real, real good football team, and uh, you know they're talking about going to the Super Bowl. And as we left the field, Salomon said, "Hey, meet you guys in Phoenix." You know. Well, the Cowboys could be on their way, but the biggest test probably comes tomorrow on Emmett Smith's knee. In the other traditional Thanksgiving Day game, Detroit beat the Vikings 44-38. And the end to a Southwest Conference tradition well of playing Turkey Day. James Brown does not play as Texas hosts Baylor. Winner at least shares the last conference title. Richard Walton is sub to Pat Fitzgerald. This goes 70 yards, breaks a scoreless tie in the second, and it stayed a shutout into the third. Ricky Williams will then score to make it 21 to nothing in the third. Horns stay unbeaten 21-13, have only the Aggies left. Rockets also won tonight, but... Again, everybody crossing their fingers for uh, Emmett Smith. Emmett is so durable. When was the last time he was hurt? Well, he's hurt. He, you know, he has hamstring problems, shoulder problems the last couple of years. Yeah. But uh, he really hasn't had a serious injury in, in yeah. quite some time. So. The, I guess, the, you know, the great fear about these, the knee problems is what you just don't know. Exactly. Sometimes can be good, sometimes... That's, it might be a little tear in there. You just never know, but hopefully not. Yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Okay, okay thanks, Brian. And that's our news this evening. We thank you very much for joining us. We hope you and your family had a very safe and enjoyable thanks giving day holiday. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you. Good. You've been watching the News 8 Update, the most watched 10 o'clock newscast in the Southwest.